Hey you guys, Daniel here from the VR Bros. I'm going to be showing you a tutorial on how to set up mixed reality on your HTC Vive. This may work as well with the Oculus. I am not 100% sure. Do not quote me on that. However, it does work on the Vive. So we're going to go through the steps. I'm going to take you through it the best I remember. Um, hopefully get you on the right foot and get you all set up. So um, start off this tutorial, a couple things you are going to need in order to even start and do this. All right. You're going to need a webcam. Hi. You're going to need a green screen behind me. And um, what else are you going to need? I, I think that's it. Yep, that's it. Oh, lighting. Very important. You're going to need lighting. All right, so make sure you have those three things before you continue on with this video. Green screen, webcam, lighting. You're also going to require an HTC Vive if you do not have one, okay? All right, so let's get started. So what you're going to do first, before you do anything, is you're going to boot up the old Steam, right? You all have Steam on your computer. Boot Steam up right now. Okay, once you have Steam up, what you're going to do is you're going to go search the store and you're going to type in L I V and you're going to hit enter, all right? So you're going to see a couple things on here. What you're going to want are two of these items. You're going to want Live Viver, which is this top one up here, and you're going to want Live client, which is this bottom one right here. Both of these are free programs for you to use. Okay. You're going to download both of these. Download, boop, boop, download, boop, boop. Once those are downloaded, you're going to let those guys install, right? And now is where the fun starts, the real fun. So what you're going to do is you're going to go into your Steam library, right? And up here under software, you're going to see live and live VR. Now this is very important. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to right click on live. You're going to want to go to properties. You're going to want to go to betas and you're going to want to opt in to the Beat Saber temp. All right. If you use this for Beat Saber, make sure you do this if you want it to run correctly. Okay. And then you're going to hit close. It's going to auto update and upload that. You can also go into Viver properties. Check if there's any betas there. If you want to enter any of them, you can. If you have any issues, you can go to the legacy. But I'm running the normal version and it seems to work just fine. So don't worry about doing that. So now, before we get started, what we're going to do is we're going to run our Live Viver. All right? So this is what this looks like when, when we boot it up. So let's boot this up here. Ooh. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, fancy. All right. Continuing on. So it's going to bring up the screen here. All right? So what you're going to do is you're going to pick your camera device. In my case, it is a Logitech HD Pro C920 that I'm using. And that's going to pop on. Hey, I'm double. Look at me. All right, so for the sake of you not seeing me twice, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to disable one of my faces. All right, so let's, let's do that. Let's disable one of me. I think we're going to do this one. There we go. Hey, okay, so what we're going to do is... Um, you're going to pick your camera that you can see up here in the corner. So the Logitech HD Pro C920, whatever camera you are using. All right. Down here is your camera tracker. Okay. Now, if you're using a puck for your HTC Vive or you have a third controller, this is where you'll click on that controller to set your tracker, which is basically say, uh, setting where your camera is in virtual space. Okay. So you will put this tracker right up or near where your webcam um, or your camera is. If you do not have an extra puck or you do not have an extra controller, there is now an extra step we have to take before we can calibrate, which isn't too hard, all right? So all we're gonna do is you're just gonna minimize your Viber and you're gonna launch your Live Client. They can both overlap and launch over each other, okay? Not a big deal. So once you launch this, it's gonna bring up a small window. That small window looks like this. Right here's a nice little guide you can open and keep up with you as you go through and set everything up. It works pretty well. There's a few areas I got confused about, but we're going to be covering those. All right. So right here, it says virtual control driver. Install this driver if you want to create mixed reality without an extra controller or tracker. Refer to the guide for calibration. 
you're going to hit install right here. Once you hit install, it'll say you must restart SteamVR. Easy enough. So just do that. And once you hit the install button, click here on your SteamVR, go to uh, devices, and go reboot Vive headset. And you now have the virtual controller. Now what you'll see when your Vive boots up is you will see these virtual controllers here. Okay? Perfect. So once you have those virtual controllers up, we can go back into our Viver. And you can hit this auto detect button right here and it'll detect a virtual controller. Now that you have that done, you're going to hit start calibration down here on the bottom. All right? So what you're going to do is you're going to hit start calibration and it's going to show this screen like it does here. You're going to grab one of your controllers and you're going to pull the trigger button. It's going to put a big square or sorry, a big X plus sign in the middle. And it's going to show you on the top right what you're going to do. So I'm going to go and hold this right over my camera, right? And I'll pull the trigger. Boop, boop. Oops, did I do that wrong? Oh, oops. Wrong controller. Make sure you use the controller that's vibrating ferociously at you. Okay, there you go. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand back. And I'm going to hold this over here. Boop, boop. And I'm going to hold this down here. Boop, boop. And if it worked right, you should see a controller. Look at that. We are halfway there. Halfway there. All these settings you see on the left-hand side, where it says fine-tune calibration, you can hold your hand up, and you can kind of just calibrate this however you want. So you can grab these and pull them, right? And you can move these to make sure everything lines up exactly how you like it. Boom. Okay. Here's your latency down here. You can adjust your latency up. Look at that. So if I put my latency up 30, you got a little more latency. You can find a sweet spot to where it feels good for you like this. This looks really good. And then what you're going to hit is export config file. All this export config file is going to do is it's going to export it onto your desktop or anywhere. It's going to say external camera.cfg. You're going to hit save on that. Okay. So now that you have that, you're done. You're done with this, this vibrator. You're done with it. You can hit the X, bleh, get rid of it. Who cares? We don't need you anymore. All right. Now you're going to go back to your live client, which still looks like this, right? And you're going to hit launch compositor. Let's launch the compositor, shall we? Once that loads up, what you're going to do is move your starting guide out of the way. All right. What you're going to get is a black screen. You will not see yourself because it will not pick up your camera right, right away. So what you're going to do is you're going to see this. It's going to look like this. Target, camera, viewfinder, output. You're going to hit camera. You're going to hit add. You're going to click your device, which is your camera you're using. In my case, the C920. All right. You're going to choose your latency. I keep mine at three frames. You're going to go to your key. And you're just going to use your arrow keys to make sure that you're your green screen is timed in where you want it. Okay. So it's smoothness, all that sort of stuff. And then you're going to save it. All right. So once it's saved, once it's saved, you're going to go to target and you're going to see steam. Boop, boop. Right. So what you're going to do here is you're going to click down. This will show you all the enabled games, the full support games supported and the possibly supported games. So you're going to click on beat saber boop, boop, and you're going to click launch. Now for me, I kept getting to this portion in the game wasn't launching. It was not looking correctly. It looked like this. What is this? Does anyone know what this is? I sure don't. Um, oh, we got a crash. Oh, don't send. No. Okay. All right, guys. So once you open your live client and you go to your camera here and you hit add and you add your, uh, your camera information in there, uh, your device, you're going to click on it. You can mess with your keying for your green screen if you want. You're going to import your calibrated file that you just saved from the last program and hit save, right? And then when it loads up, it's going to load up. Um, it's going to load up the screen here. You're going to want to make sure that you have Beat Saber running, right? Once Beat Saber is running, you're going to want to make sure you go target, manual, click on the target here and click Beat Saber. Boop, boop. And it'll pop up like this. Don't worry about changing your SDK effects right now. You shouldn't have to do that. Now, a lot of the time, 
when you get into the game, it's not going to look like this. You're going to see blue and you're not going to see the screens here, right? So there's a room adjustment within, um, within Beat Saber where you can sit here and adjust it now based on your height and stuff in the room, right? To make it exactly how you want it. So people can still see it, see in front of you a little bit. I do mine off the side a little bit. That way when you hit, um, it's really hard to see this. That way when you hit apply and go through the game, people can still, um, people can kind of still see what's going on. They can see down the lane and see what's going. So now if we were to go to solo and standard and click on a game and hit one of these buttons over here that I can't hit because I can't see, um, we could start the game and, uh, and it would, it would work from there. So, as you can tell, um, I could probably did my calibration a little better with this back when we were doing the calibrations. However, it's not a big deal. Um, go in and change it if you want. If you want to mess with it, um, you can. You can get it pretty spot on with zero latency, um, like I did in my original video. Um, as you can see right now, my left one isn't popping up. This happens to me a lot, and the only way I've learned to fix that is to shut down Steam VR turn on both my controllers before launching Beat Saber or before watch it, want, launching the Live Client again. Um, for some reason, it just doesn't pick up this controller, and it's probably because I'm using a third controller as my tracker as opposed to just using the virtual controller. So, um, hopefully, with that information, it will give you a good start on how to get it going. Guys, I'm going to tell you something. It is a little finicky. If you make a mistake, if you get into this screen and it's just not working out, you want to go back to the Live VIVR and redo your calibrations. You want to make sure that your tracker, you're, you're selecting the right item there. That's the biggest problem I've had. I went, I went through and built a configuration for all the items in there because I didn't know which one I was supposed to be building it for, and it can be a little confusing. So um, mess with it, have fun with it. Um, if you want to, if you have any questions, um, uh, Live has an amazing Discord community, you can jump out there and ask them any questions you want, and they normally have someone get back to you pretty quickly. Again, they have a support page on there as well, and they will walk you through it, and you'll see people answering all the questions that you may have concerns about. Um, but hopefully this video at least gets you on the right track, helps you get um, in the zone with getting it set up correctly. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me as well. I don't do a lot of these videos, so if there's anything I could have done to make it better, please let me know. All right? All right, we'll talk to you guys later. Take care and goodbye. You're the bright side.